the roadmap. How to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week we interview a great agent who is consistently taking two, three, four listings a week. And we have an exciting guest today. We encourage you to take notes and apply as much of the knowledge as quickly as you can. And then use the copycat principle. We're going to have a lot of opportunities to ask questions during this broadcast. This is a special show. This is the Handling Objections show. Yay. We're going to go knee deep. We're going knee deep, knee deep in handling objections. My co-host Carly Hathaway is on vacation. Jen Mertland's here with me. We're going to... Hello. Because she's making calls every day, all day, all morning, four all hours morning. a day. She expires for sale by owners, just listed, just sold. And we're going to really dissect and we're going to go knee deep in the, some of the strongest objection handlers. So this is a show you, you're going to want to watch several times. Let's talk about the Vulcan 7 Challenge. All right. And, and this is so important. And you know, if people would do it, if you, you guys noticed, remember Bernie Gallerani. Remember when we had him on? We didn't even mm -hmm. talk about the Vulcan 7 Challenge. He said, when I first got started every month, I got on a plane and I shadowed somebody mm -hmm. because he wanted it that badly. I mean, exactly. it's, it's, it's not that hard. Pretend it's your job to shadow. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. Just make, you know, make, that, make that commitment to go follow somebody. Maybe they're only an hour and a half away in another market. Maybe they're three hours away. Maybe you have to get on a plane, but you're talking about a, just over 24 hours to do this. Get there that afternoon, have dinner with them if they're available, shadow them all morning, download an app on your phone, cell phone to record their conversations, write notes, get forms, systems, ask a lot of questions, go to lunch with them and head back home. At the end, do that every month. At the end of 12 months, you'll have a dozen friends who are hugely successful and you will be one of them. Jen Mertland's here with me. Hi. And we're going to share a quick in. story Please, about. Tell me a story. So I have shadowed actually Bernie Gallerani a handful of times. Yeah, you did. In my, you know, in the past few years. And one of the things that I learned that works best when shadowing mm -hmm. is to have a specific thing that you're trying to learn, like something specific. Mm -hmm. But what I found was, is that you actually end up learning stuff so much more like you don't know what you don't know and then you see it and you're like oh wow i could do that well the belief system's so much higher when you see it yes you hear it on stage that read it in sense. a book mm -hmm. people tell you when you see your it, your eyes open up your your willingness to embrace it is yes. not only possible but i can do it yeah it's so much higher it's and anybody can come shadow so, us in cincinnati there you go yeah <laughs> right it, yeah why well, am Join, you know, join us. We'll have some fun. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of people shadow. Yeah. You've had people shadow. Yeah. Sarah, who was here last week, she's had plenty of people go shadow her and listen to her and head back home. Yeah, she's amazing. You need to do it 12 times. So Or 15. Yeah. 20. So let's talk about one of the things I want to talk about, two things, and then we're going to go knee deep into these handling objections. And I want to get your thoughts on it. Like, self-doubt. Mm -hmm. When you look at all the people we interviewed over the last few months, there's no self-doubt. No. They were passionate. I am the best choice. Yes. I had somebody that I know really well inform me that their good friend, they found out their good friend is going to move. And I said, well, have you, did you call him immediately and say, hey, this is great. Let's get together. Yeah. No, I'm going to just chat with his wife and say, he, he knows so many people and he probably has somebody at Blah Blah Real. Yes. So self-doubt is, but it's common. Yeah. Like I may not be good enough and it's in their voice and it's, and I've seen this with a lot of people and where we see it the most is when they're calling expires and somebody says, well, I'm going to go back with less Asian or I'm going to do this. We're going to take it off the market. And they maybe throw out one objection handler, but they, they cower and they, they don't continue. They don't persist. Right. And even the two Sue's, you saw the two Sue's, mm -hmm. even the two Sue's, it was like, they'll they're just nice. say, when can we get together? They kept closing and kept yeah. closing. And then I, as amiable as Sue Wall is, mm -hmm. she's still closing over and over and over and over and over because she believes she's- She's the best. Well, and in a way, in that area, she is amazing. She dominates. Us. Isn't there an old saying, if, if you don't believe you're the best, nobody will or something along those lines? No, but it should be a saying. <laughs> If you don't believe you're the best, nobody else will. <laughs> exactly. So we see the self-doubt thing that you have to, you have to be 100% committed. I remember a, a couple lived a, a street or two away and, 
and I'd set a listing appointment with them. And, mm-hmm. and this, they'd met with this other guy uh, and they called me up and they said, you know, Ren, it's, you know, we've decided to go with Ed and, you know, we appreciate, and I know we're supposed to meet on Thursday. And I said, wait, 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 wait. No. I said, you can go with Ed, but we've got to meet first. Then decide you want to go with Ed. And they yeah. said, all right. So I went in there and gave my best presentation. Mm-hmm. Poor old Ed. <laughs> No, so you can't have any self-doubt if you've got self-doubt they will sense it they'll yeah. pick up on it right sure. well you're not going to close seven times remember who was it that was talking about how they pushed the penny, alan. seven pennies forward. oh yeah alan on our team and yeah, then alan on your team pushed mm-hmm. the seven pennies for it no we do quarters you do quarter <laughs> hundred dollar bills seven hundred thousand dollar bills do they make those i don't know, I don't know we should find out so, and then the other thing is inconsistency I was ah, talking the realtor to, roller coaster. Yeah, I yeah. was talking to someone. Um, won't mention names. I'll just say East Coast. Talked to him yesterday. He's watching this. He goes, "I love your show," and he had shadowed Bernie Gallerani like four years ago. Still talks about that mm-hmm. one shadow. Needs to do it every month. And like, how many listings you've taken so far this year? Oh, around fifty. Mm-hmm. So you know, he's close to 50, 48, 50. I'm like, one a month. Yeah. I mean, one a week. One a week. I said, you need to be on my show. You need to get to two weeks. I said, you were doing that four years ago. Right. But, you know, why? We know the answer. Because. Well, you lead generate and then you get clients and then you service those clients. So you stop lead generating and you just go up and down. Honestly, I don't know about you, but roller coasters make me sick. So I like to be. Right consistently and 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 this team gives they have great service but really you are let me tell you what you're doing and i know you're watching and nobody knows who you are but you're saving the price of a good admin you're saving thirty five thousand a year you're losing it right you can still have that same level of customer service you can put in if you were doing three or four hours a day of lead generation with your goal of taking two listings a week instead of one, mm-hmm. or which means you have to set three or four appointments every week, you know, pretty much one appointment a day you need to set. And as Bernie says, control the controllables, the four hour, you can get in the four hours and you can make that happen. And how much literally would double your income if you would do this. At least, yeah, I mean, actually, you shouldn't be a good same, admin. You should be able to double a yeah. great admin. You're tripling yeah. or quadrupling. You shouldn't be in the same place you were three years ago. Take a look at creative avoidance behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I got to work on my pending. Oh, I get super creative too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, me too. <laughs> got to work on anything else other than what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> my coach taught, has set me up years ago. He goes, I want you, how many hours of prospecting do you do? And he, it didn't match up with how many listings I was taking. And so he said, I want you to track it. You know, have a little stop low watch. You can download them on your phone and, and track and only have it running when you're making calls oh. and stop it. When you stop, what'd oh, you find out? First hour, 12 minutes, <laughs> second hour, 16 minutes. Oh, ouch. Oh, I need a cup of coffee. Oh, I got to go potty. Oh, uh, I got to oh, tell her. somebody about this call that oh. they were mean to me. Oh yeah, yeah. I had an administrator once make me a, it was on a lanyard and it was a sign that says, if you see me call my coach. Cause that means I was out of my office. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it was not nice. Yeah. So people would stop me if they would see me out of the office, they would stop me. And they would call you. And they- <laughs> so I wrote down here weak or no accountability, weak or no accountability. Mm-hmm. So like Kari Kohler, she has, you know, two Brady bunches going to of Google Hangouts people. Mm-hmm. Kari, where are you? If they, you don't see your picture with a you. headphone, you know, it's setting up that level of accountability with two or three or four accountability partners. Well, for me, it, yeah, for me, it's got to be external accountability for sure. So um, Denise Swick from Remax and Dayton, yeah. um, her and I, we have dropped off and we need to get back on. So Denise, if you're watching this, <laughs> I will call you later. But at 8.50, we we're texting each other saying how many contacts we had gotten between eight and eight fifty, and how many appointments we set. Mm-hmm. So I knew if, if I said nothing, I didn't get any, Yeah. then she'd be like, what, what are you doing? She would call <laughs> me out on it. So it has to be external. It can't be like, you can't count on yourself to hold yourself accountable. Yeah. And I think you need two or three accountability partners. For or sure. four. I remember Bernie had four at one time because you've got to surround yourself. Right. Make it not an option. 
you know, it's more gratifying to go take a buyer around. It's more gratifying mm -hmm. to work on your pending. It's more gratifying to be your own assistant. You know, the rule, you're, you're saving $20 an hour, you're losing two hundred fifty dollars right. an hour, or more, or depending more, on your price right? point. Right, depending on your price point. Like with Sean McCarthy, who chose to work the higher ranges, he's losing eight hundred dollars an hour if he wanted to be his own assistant. Right. So it really, the what you're doing, folks, we can eliminate a lot of this just by the, the actions and setting up the environment. And you know who I was talking to yesterday? I want you. To, yeah, I gave him a challenge. I said, you've got to go to two listings a week by the end of March. I'm going to call you in the last week of March. Nice. And then you're going to be on our show in the first week of April. <laughs> so you got, stop being your own assistant. You can do it. I have a funny accountability story. Yeah. So on our team, we, um, one of the accountabilities for one of the agents was he had to make a certain number of calls that mm -hmm. day. And he had to pre-write a check to his ex-wife. No. <laughs> and he had to tell his current wife he was doing that and write it. And if he didn't make it, then he had, we sent mm -hmm. it. So he wrote it out ahead of time, knew what the goal was, and he actually ended up not making it. And so we had to mail the check to the ex-wife. But here's the good news in that. But yeah, I mean, if he wouldn't have, it would have been even worse. You know, what did they say? Shoot for the stars and if you hit the moon you're still okay yeah yeah there you go so you mean he wins either way is that right. i picked up some money but he was right. i had a, a great agent dave Wari in my where i sold a lot of real estate for years uh we had a challenge of how many past clients we would talk to you know each week and and we had a little competition yeah where, uh whoever won that week got a hundred dollars i paid him three hundred dollars for three weeks in a row hundred dollars hundred dollars hundred dollars but I talked to way more past than you would have had you so not I lost, have, I lost, right. I lost, and then I won big. Exactly. So that kind of, uh, Tony Smith, Tony Smith had a routine where, and probably still does, I'm sure you do, Tony, where he would hang up a uh, little clips, 30 $100 bills. Mm -hmm. Every time he made a contact in his, you know, from, from eight to 11, 30 or 12, he would take that down a hundred dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Any, and he told his assistant, when I go to lunch, any of the ones left are yours. <laughs> what if you just do that? <laughs> do it. Just see what happens. Yeah. You know, it's, it's how important it's is It's better this? if the money goes to somebody that you don't like, because right. you can always justify it in your head. Like, oh, well, they needed the money or they, mm -hmm. I'm giving it to charity or whatever. So mm -hmm. I remember we did an accountability with our group that if... There was one guy, if he didn't make it, he had to pay the other guy. And so that ended up happening. And the other guy couldn't donate it. He couldn't like take his wife out for dinner. He had to do something ridiculous. So he said he was going to get a big picture of himself, like one of those cardboard cutouts and put it in the other guy's office if he lost. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really motivating when you yeah. know it's going to be ridiculous if you lose. Like if it's $500, if that makes you cringe or... Yeah. A thousand dollars, ten thousand, or whatever. You have to stretch it. You've got to stretch mm -hmm. it. You know, you've got to make the accountability solid painful. and painful, and, and really. Strong. It has to hurt. And here's the last thing that gets people in trouble, and then we'll go into these objection handlers. Is, is, and I, you know, I respect this, and you know, they're like, I'm not. I'm going to work this buyer. I sold their, I've sold their six hundred thousand dollar house, and they're buying. They're buying a 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's thirty six thousand mm -hmm. dollars in a lot of markets. So sure. Like I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not going to give them eight half of it, eighteen thousand. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. You don't have to. So the the old rule is like twenty five, fifty, and seventy five. You might refer to somebody a buyer at twenty five percent. You you might have a buyer agent on your team at fifty fifty. And then when you have gimmies like this, trade up gimmies you're paying them 20 or 25% is it's the sad. amount they're making. They're making, I mean, because there's only three homes to show, let them make $7,000. You don't have to pay them 20, Right. pay them seven. So you can control this. Well, one of the things can we- can stay on the listing side, focus on the yeah. listings. One of the things we used to do as we were growing before we had other agents on our team yeah. is I would do exactly what you're saying. I would refer out the buyers to another agent in the office that I knew would close it. Mm -hmm. And we would do it on a 50, 50 or 60, 40 split. But then mm -hmm. I would take back 
the pending mm -hmm. because I had a transaction coordinator on our team and I still wanted to keep the relationship. So then they were basically like a showing assistant right. and they would write the offer. But right. then once it was done, I would take it back. They open the door. So that's how you remain you can do it that control. yeah you can do it both ways mm -hmm. and then you still call them once a week want to make sure we're taking good care exactly. of you exactly so either way but don't pay them 20 grand to to show three homes pay them a, you know you know pay them 10 percent and they'll 15, agree to pay them it 20. and if they don't agree guess Get somebody what else there's stand, somebody standing right behind them <laughs> right behind them so i'll take that seven grand for throwing three mansions it's not a problem right so, so let's look at you know there's there's some and we were talking about this this morning a little more in the morning session is, mm -hmm. you know, getting reports in seven, eight, 10 seconds. Yeah, or less. By showing a lot of repeat and approval. Mm -hmm. So a lot of agents will go with these scripts. And as Brianne Llewellyn said, she would look, watch her dad go through the scripts and she would use them and not get the same results because it wasn't conversational. Right. It wasn't warm and yeah. friendly. and It wasn't her words, uh, yeah. I think she said too. Yeah, yeah. she didn't own it. And right. It wasn't using response patterns like, mm -hmm. oh, that's so exciting. Oh, good for you and wow you're moving to cleveland how exciting you know, I mean, mm -hmm. no response patterns beyond that there are things we can say you know like whenever somebody says something that you know they were disappointed with the last agent but it's your strength you just say well i'm glad we're talking right that's exactly why i'm we glad we're talking right well there's the objectomatic mm -hmm. that's a, no matter what they say no matter what they say use the objectomatic <laughs> No, which is which is that's exactly why we need to meet you have to pound the yeah, table yeah and, and our and our camera crew <laughs> says don't pound the table i got in trouble that on actually last requires show. a yeah, table pound it does it does that's exactly, that's exactly why, why we, we need to meet right the objectomatic no matter what they say use that objectomatic mm -hmm. All right, great. Well, one of you talked about rapport, and one of the quickest ways that we always talk about to get into rapport is to mirror and match their hello yeah can and it works, so, it, it, works. So, it works perfectly <laughs> it is a way to because you want to mirror and match their tonality and a lot of times all you have to do all you have to go on at the very beginning is the word hello so or you hi say, or hey or you whatever say hello back the same way if they go hey you go, say hey hey, hey. <laughs> they go hello you go hello, hello. <laughs> they go hello you go hello and but, and it's people, instant rapport well yeah it's tribe they won't hang up on themselves mm -hmm. So that mirror match of that tribe, right? You got, you got, you can't talk like you. You have to talk like them. Yeah, you, we're chameleons. Yeah, if you if they're singing when they talk, you got to say like hello. Or if they're really <laughs> driver driver, hello, yeah, okay, uh, you better be right doing it the same way. So it's or using. They hang up. You always say use the words that they're using. Yeah. Use the tone, the rate of speech. Yeah. Like all of that to your advantage, which happens in the first word. I know. And so that means you can't say some long opener. If they're giving you two sentences or yeah. two word sentences. You better have a short opener. Yeah. Calling about the house on Highland. Yes. yes. <laughs> still accepting offers. You're still accepting offers on that property, <laughs> which is a great, a great voicemail. You're still accepting offers. Or if you get somebody's mother, parent, or brother. Is she still accepting offers on that property? Hold on here, call her yourself. Here's her number. Oh, exactly. Okay. They always got say it. that. Got it. Got it. Okay. By the way, when do you plan on moving? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. You so, always have to ask that. Yeah. One of the ones I remember going on a listing appointment and I was sure I was going to get it. I was up against a fairly new agent. Mm -hmm. And I called back to try to get things wrapped up because I couldn't get it signed at that. He goes, Well, we decided to go with Kathy. And I said, May I ask why? And he, he goes, she specializes in homes that didn't sell the first time. Oh, like, no. That is old <laughs> as dirt. And obviously, it still works to this it day. It does work. And so, I'm like, I've forgotten about yeah. using it. Well, what's really powerful, too, is when we prospect, sometimes we're prospecting for another member on the team and setting up the appointment for that person. Mm -hmm. So, we will use that. Oh, this is the area that they specialize in. Mm -hmm. And when you say that, word specialize or whatever you're going to say around that they just really hone in on it and they're like oh this is your area and you may have only sold one but if you sold 10 houses then that one is a specialty specialties i mean people people are looking for that specialist yeah. especially and that brings us to another point they unless you tell them differently they think we all do the same thing so right. if you, if you specialize, true, if you mm -hmm. specialize, so you want to make the point, you know, I do things 
or our team does things very differently. differently. There's your boilerplate there. If you, <clears throat> they're getting ready to hang up on you, you go, wait, 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 wait. Our team does things very differently. Yes. Well, right. I mean, because they, they don't, it ne would never occur to them. Right. And I think that's, that's an interesting point because we're presenting it from our point of view without taking into consideration of what they're hearing or what they think. So we have to figure out how to present it from their point of view. So you're right. They do all think we're the same. Mm -hmm. Logically, that makes no sense. Not every lawyer is the same. Not every doctor, not every right. teacher is the same. I mean, think of attorneys. They have areas of specialty from one well, thing to another. Well, and even the areas of specialty, yeah. those attorneys aren't the same. Yeah. You know, but Right. Well, yeah, I don't mean say, geographically, but I mean like divorce or right. real estate closings exactly. or uh, probate or whatever. Yeah. It may be. So if you or say we contract specialize in contracts, and, business mm -hmm. contracts, you know, you know whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it's all areas of specialty. Mm -hmm. So as, as you differentiate yourself, there's your value proposition. Yeah. Another thing, and depending on what script you're using, sometimes they start disparaging their last agent. True. They say they didn't do this. They didn't right. do that. A line that works so well. You don't deserve that. Oh, yeah. Say with a downfall. You, you don't deserve, deserve that. that. <laughs> no, no. Oh, don't yeah, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> it really opens it up. Right. That's so, true. I've got. I mean, I've got several more ideas here. Um, okay. Let's look at some questions. It would be fun to uh, look at some questions that people are asking and um, go. Uh, and, and now, uh, if you're on the Vulcan Seven Network, we can see your questions. I, I know we're simulcasting on. And I've got to do a spot for them in a, in a few minutes on lead gen uh, with 41,000. Oh, Aaron, Aaron. Yeah. yeah, I love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Good well, job, Aaron. They're up to 41,000. I think they've got <laughs> up great. another thousand uh, members here in the last week or two. 41,000. It's an awesome So page. we're on we're on live on there as a simulcast as well. And uh, I, we uh, do a plug for him as a thank you, uh, which we will do shortly. Um, but let's look at some of the questions. What does your weekly prospecting schedule look like and does it vary from week to week? That's a good question. Um, so what we do is we actually look at it from the month. So we track our contacts and the results every single day mm. and we put it on a spreadsheet so we can see how many contacts it takes for us to get a listing and we do it by person. So every person knows yeah. what their um, contact to listing take and ratio gotcha. is. And so then for the month, we'll say, okay, We'll look and say, what days are we going to be off? What are the days that we're actually working? So we typically find that there's about 18 working days in mm -hmm. each month. Yeah. And then we'll backtrack it. And so from week to week, I guess it sort of look, could look differently depending on if you're on vacation or not. Um, but you will know that ahead of time. And then you always want to do your most important thing first. So your most important thing, the most important thing is generate for new business. So you do that very first thing. Right out of the gate. Right out of the thing. gate. Yeah. So really, I mean, every, I mean, I mean, the general rule is always to, for every morning to be identical. Yes. From the time until you noon. walk in at 715 to noon is mm -hmm. identical. Right. You know, 225 days a year. Yeah. That's, you know, that's what you're working towards yeah. for yeah. sure. You and then 40 days off. That's not bad. And then around the 10th or 12th, not, you know, definitely by the 15th of the month, we look and say, are we on pace to get to where we need to be? And if we're not, because sometimes we're not, we're not perfect. So that's halftime, isn't it? It's halftime. The 15th of the month, it's halftime. Mm -hmm. Like you go in the locker room, go, yep. what the hell? Yeah, going on? Get your head out the, of your butt. The goal is 16 yeah. listings and we are at five. We right, it's at, not gonna work. Gotta be at, at least eight, eight minimum. Mm -hmm. so. Well, depending on how many work days are left, like this month was, Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and then you have Christmas and stuff like that. So you have to take it into account. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a system to implement. Okay. If we are behind, what do we do? And so mm -hmm. we already know upfront what the plan is if we are behind. And really once you implement that plan and you know exactly what you need to do, your chances of getting behind are very slim. You actually end up having more time because you're focused on doing the one thing that matters most, which is taking listings. Perfect. Yeah. And if they, if we just, you know, what's that rule? If you're focusing on, if taking away everything that you do, except for that, just right. continuing to take away the things, yeah. finding somebody to do them for you. Yeah. So what I keep a list. So if I find myself doing something that 
is not in my priority list or something somebody else can do, I'll write it down. And so then I know what needs to be handed off. And that's how we hired the property manager. There you go. I know because she keeps buying doors. You know, every you know, you don't let her go near your property. She'll end up buying and renting That's it true. out. That's all she does is buy and rent them out, and buy them and rent them out. What I'm looking the, for four. More. What is the earliest time you would begin calling? The law says 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. The Telecommunications Act of 1992 and amendments. <laughs> and that is the official position. That is the official position. Yes. So uh, not a lot of questions rolling through on the Vulcan 7 network and I don't have uh, uh, the lead gen site up to look at questions there. Do you attend your closings? If I have to. So for us, what we're working towards, in Ohio we do a lot of round table, well in Cincinnati, sorry, we do a lot of round table closings, which personally I think is ridiculous. I think that the title company and the, our client, the seller should they should be the only ones in the room. So that's what we are pushing. You're moving towards an escrow closing. I guess I that's, that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. In, in, in I this, don't need to be there. And every, every market has different traditions right. in Virginia where I sold mostly in Richmond, Virginia. It, you know, nobody went to closings except for the, uh, you know, it's a waste. Right. It's a but waste. But here it's, it's a big, it's a big show. For now, but it won't be. <laughs> After I get done with them, but yeah, so mark my words. This time next year. Yeah, this time next year. <laughs> so I don't go to all of them. Um, it's a, you know, it just kind of depends on what it is, especially if it's in the morning. I'm not, I can't go. All right, we'll do one more question, and then we'll go into four or five more really good objection handlers, and then we'll go back to questions again. Uh, I have how many days do you prospect? We already covered that. What's your biggest challenge when you first started in the business? The biggest challenge. Hmm. I don't know because I, there wasn't a lot that I knew. So I just did it. I would say I run across a lot of people that are nervous that they don't have leads. That never really occurred to me because we can sell any house. Well, you came from a direct sales background, which is rare for people. Most yeah. people don't come from a direct sales background. That's true. So you knew you could just go out there and Well, that's why I did. I knocked on doors. That was yeah. my first thing. Were you selling Kirby's? No, I knocked on doors for leads for real estate. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay. Right. <laughs> but before that, yeah, I did sell office supplies. Office so I was office. knocking on doors. Okay. I didn't know if you sold a few Kirby's. <laughs> no, no vacuums. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting that industry. They, you know, um, there's a, my father had a store and uh, this, the uh, this guy and gal came rolling in with big grins on their face, threw some tax down, vacuumed him up, <laughs> sold him a $2,000 vacuum cleaner. Nice. But what I understand that they do is they would get together at 6.30 in the morning down the street at their little office, all the Kirby reps, and they would sing Christmas songs and get all pumped up and happy. And, <laughs> and the energy level was so high, then they would go out and call on people. So. That's a good idea. Well, in our version of that is affirmations. Yeah, you got. That's right. You guys do have. We do, and we say we have, have a whole a charter. You, you have your charter. You read a mission statement yeah. that we read, and we have a little dance and to it's, it. Yeah, it's super should, fun. Yeah, and, and if you've seen their holiday Christmas card, it's hilarious. It's, it's terrible. It's, they're, they're all in costumes. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite a getup. Quite a you get -up. do have to have fun. Yeah, that's true. All right, so let's look at some good, really good objection handles. Good, okay. And I've collected a lot of these. Um, fact: Here's one. Uh, from Mike Darda, I was at the Drake Hotel with a big breakout event, and he was on a treadmill, and I was on a treadmill, and you know, the man takes 18, 20 listings a month down in Cape Coral, and it still says the Drake on it, and uh, my, <laughs> my chicken scratch on here, it says, uh, when can I schedule my interview? He would do, he would, people would call, and they go, well, we've already relisted it. Instead of saying, well, congratulations, or who's it listed with, or this, that, or the other, uh, he would go, when can I schedule my interview? Oh, and huh. it works. I'm going to have to try that. One out of five people are lying. And when they say that, and then, <laughs> and so what would happen, he goes about one out of five would go, would go, well, maybe we could do Thursday or something. Right. Like that. So you really so, find out if yeah. it's a smoke screen or yeah. if it's real. Well, when can I schedule my interview? And he would get one out of five. He'd schedule an appointment <laughs> when they would say that. That's awesome. So, you know, you go around, you hang around with people that are taking those, that level of listings, ask them different things that they do. And I may have more scraps of paper with, and you oh, do yeah. too, mm -hmm. with object. And I know Kari Kohler referred to that as well. So uh, one of my favorite yeah. ones is when you get the people that are just want to get off the phone with you, yeah. you say, wait, 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 
Okay, one more, one, one more, more question. question. And what is that next question for your kid? Or what do you typically say? Well, it's, you know, gosh, that was a good looking home. What do you think stopped it from selling? Right. And that works. They it totally right works. Back. They come right back. They come right They're back. They're like, oh, you want to talk about me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yep. Such a good looking home. Well, and then that other expression. Because your kitchen is you know, gorgeous. Yeah, there you go. Or something <laughs> like that. Yes. What do you think stopped it oh, from geez. selling? I can't believe that. You don't deserve sell. that. Oh, well, our agent didn't do it. No, I know. Oh, you don't deserve that. <laughs> so, um, I think of some of my other so, favorites. Well, um, well, here's one of my favorites. You know, on, honestly, Jen, what is your hesitation to meet with such a highly successful team such as ours? And you have to make sure you do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, Jen, what is your hesitation to meet with such a highly successful team such, such as, as ours? ours? Yeah. You know, if we sold it and you knew you could move in the next four or five weeks, mm -hmm. would that create a problem for you? I, like, I use that one a would lot. That would a that problem? create a problem for you? Yeah. Yeah. And even Sue If Miller, you got an offer on the home. Sue Wall used that one two weeks ago. Or if you got an offer on the home, would you would that, sell it? Yeah. Yeah. Or would that create a problem for you? Yeah, there was one uh, Andrew Lacey used to use. He would say, uh, you know, if I, if I had someone who could pay all cash or was well qualified, would you mm -hmm. still not want to sell it? And they would pause and go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you find out, you know, because we a lot of us are calling yeah. old expireds, like really old, like mm -hmm. three and five years. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to you have to dig because they've already made arrangements for the last three or five years when the house didn't sell. So you yeah. really have to get back into that motivation. Like when yeah. you like you, you know, when you put that sign in the yard the first time, yeah. you were excited, weren't you? Yeah. What was that about? Where, what what were the plans then? Right. You know, Where were you going? You got to take them back to that time. Mm -hmm. You got to take them back to that time. Exactly. So, you know, and then what do you say? Because you hear it all the time. Well, we're going back with Nancy or whatever. It kind of depends on how they say it. Okay. So there's a couple of ways you can handle it. I think one is you can be a little snotty <laughs> or snotty and be like, you know, I'm curious what's going to be different this time. Yeah. See, we specialize in homes that didn't sell the first time um, and kind of talk to them about that. Um, there is a way to say something around the definition of insanity about doing no. the same, th <laughs> same thing and expecting a different result. Yeah. If you have the tone and personality yeah. that can deliver that, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I can usually deliver that. I'm curious what's going to be different, right. you know, this time. If a different marketing plan can yield you a different result, is that something that you would take a look at? But it's the and same sign in the yard. Yes. It's, it's the same yeah. sign and all the neighbors are like, what's wrong with it? It's oh, the same sure. Because they're passing it. Yeah, it's a new it. sign in the yard. Yeah. In fact, I used to say, uh, I'd say, question. And they go, yeah. Do you feel you gave your last agent a fair chance to oh, get the home mm -hmm. sold? And they go, well, and then I'd say, you know, I don't know if it's the case in this case, but a lot of times the previous agent feels very badly that they didn't sell the home. Mm -hmm. And secretly they're relieved when another right. successful agent takes over. They're yeah. like, darn, that was six months. That's I didn't get that sold. <laughs> oh, God, well, it's expired. And they're actually glad when some a great agent comes and well, takes over and gives that and bring in yeah. fresh horses. Bring well, I'm sure horses. that they did everything they could to get the home sold. Yeah. You know, they called everybody they knew. They brought all the buyers yeah. that they had. They yeah. told everybody in their office. That they yeah. pulled out all the stops to sell the house <clears throat> and it, it didn't work. And, you know, do you want to sell the home? That's exactly what I would need to meet. Right. That's house exactly Tuesday at four need. or is five <clears throat> better? Yes. House always, today. Always make it about them. Don't say I have some time at. Always say, how does your schedule look for tomorrow at four or would six be better? Be better right? Yeah, don't say I have time. Mm -hmm. Make it about them. Always make it about them. Yeah. Yeah. And remind them you do things very differently. And then, you know, they'll be like, what? We'll just say, you know, you know, go ahead and set a time. Pretend they yeah. say, what time can you come over? Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever do the listing and presentation over the phone. Well, the purpose but of they will try to get you to do it. They, they will. And the purpose of prospecting is to set the appointment. It is not mm -hmm. a sales. It, it's to set the appointment. So you have to set it in order. You can't deliver the sales presentation because you're prospecting to set appointments. It makes no sense. There you go. You're exactly. not going to go fishing and then eat the fish while you're on the boat. It doesn't no. make sense. 
No, it you're doesn't. gonna go back and right. clean it and do all the stuff you got to do. Yeah, yeah, and then eat it. Yeah, just yeah, and, and you know, and if you say I need to see your home, then they'll get it. They understand. Like I need to see your home. You they know, want to show it to you. Right, and they do want to show it to you. Well, unless you're like the one girl who only does it in what's her name? That she only does the appointments in the office. Love her. Oh, there are plenty of them. I uh, need to do that. But uh, I, I mean, Adam Hergenroth was doing it up in Vermont, and mm -hmm. I think he's in like three or four markets. He was doing them in the office. Who else is doing them in the office? Co Ryan Dallas in Champaign, Illinois, does them in the oh, office. Oh, he does do them in the office. Yeah, they come into the office. Who else? Uh, what's her name out in Salem, Oregon? I can't, uh, Gladys Blum for many years, uh, and she would sell 150, 200 homes. She would do them in. They would come to, she was that strong to convince them to come into the office. That's awesome. So, you know. Well, just, and it is based on relevant properties. I mean, and it Patrick is what Southern, it is. And Patrick Southern. Okay. It's, well, actually, he was doing them over the phone. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's even better. But, you know, in, in <laughs> Those high, are the best. In a high condo market, you can do that. But, yeah. You know, and Jeff Quinton does a lot of them over the phone. Whenever you're in resort property, you can do that. Oh, yeah. You can, you can do the appointment over the phone. But there's a lot more properties that'll say what it is. I mean, yeah. they dictate the price for sure. Right. Yeah. That so, makes sense. So the biggest thing that people hesitate when you're setting an appointment mm -hmm. is they think it's going to be a long dog and pony show because some of you, some of you spend too oh, much time geez. in the house. 30 minutes, people. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Because, you know, they don't want you to come over for an hour and a half, two hours. No. Some of you are doing an hour and a half and two hours. Cut it out. If you're doing a pre-listing packet, if you're pre-qualifying, yeah, they're not preparing. You're down to thirty minutes. I know it's, they're doing. They're asking all the questions when they get there. Well, then they're surprised. So we do, um, and a lot of people do a pre-qualification. So you set the appointment, and mm -hmm. then we'll pre-qualify them. Um, I like to set it for a later date and say, "Hey, I'm going to do some research. There's a number of questions I'll need to ask you. Can I call you back at mm -hmm. five, or can I call you back tomorrow at two, or?" whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that really overcomes the people who have this strong need to like be, they feel like they have to be friends and be in rapport because mm -hmm. that gives you another contact with them. And then you can ask all of your questions. I mean, we have 25 questions yeah. that we ask and then you send them the pre-listing packet and you yeah. connect with them again. Hey, did you get that? Did you did read you it? Have, did you read it? Did you have questions? Yeah. And if, yeah, if they don't read it, you yeah. just. And then when you go over, it's all about it's uh, price and signing a contract. That's because, it. Price and strategy. Yeah. So that's it. So because that's their hesitation, here's a good script. It's a long one. We did this the other day. As okay. I remember, but it works really well. And it goes something like this. And because this is recorded, if you're on, Facebook or on that lead gen site, or if you're on Vulcan seven network, you get the replays so you can get it. It's tell you what, Jen, tell you what, mm -hmm. I don't mind doing this. I can come out, take a look at your home, tell you how much it'll bring in today's market, how long it will take and just what it is we've been doing to sell so many homes mm -hmm. here in the Hyde park area. And then you guys decide what's best for yourself. How does How's that, that sound? sound? And yeah. then what she'll hesitate and I'll go, listen, Jen, if none of this makes any sense in 10, 12 minutes, I'll just shake your hand and be on my way. Tomorrow at four. Perfect. And then you go, she'll say, all right, but I'm not signing I'm anything. Not <laughs> all right, but I'm not signing anything. But, but you still appointment. bring the contract and you still bring the sign. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the lockbox. Yeah. So that works really, that's a good one because you're saying I'm not, I'm going to come and if you don't want me to stay long, I'll leave, but at least we can meet and connect and cover space. well and part of the pre-qualification script at the end is so our so our meeting will only take about 20 minutes does mm -hmm. that work for you mm -hmm. and that also sets the expectation that you're not going to be there to dilly dally right you're not having dinner yeah, right no i'm not you're not there for dinner yeah speaking of that I, one of the things i always did is try to be on the front side of the dinner what <laughs> okay. yeah, well i mean if they go 7 30 or 8 Sometimes yeah. they are feeling full and happy and they eat dinner and you're their entertainment for the evening. That's and makes You don't sense. get home till nine at night. Gosh, I haven't thought about that, but that makes sense. Yeah. So I always shop for four o'clock and six latest. Because mm -hmm. they, you know, if they beg to 6.30, well, I don't get home till six. All right, 6.30. Right. But, but not later. Oh, I used to be so well, mad your family driving home at nine o'clock at night. Because I had to get up at five the next right? morning. <laughs> How much fun's that? Not fun. No. Now that brings up a question. What yeah. are your thoughts on being like the first or the last agent? Doesn't matter. I get a lot of those questions. I, 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 um, what I found is if you're in an appointment where they're meeting with three in a row, like on a Thursday, like uh, 
four, six, and eight, you don't want to be in the middle. No, don't be in the middle. Because they don't even remember you're there. <laughs> they don't even remember that you were there. You should be the last. But you could ask them a question before you go out if you know they're interviewing. After, you know, after meeting, if everything we say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that we can sell your home, will you even find it necessary to speak with the others? And you can set it up. And then there is a lot of times conversation around that. And you say, look, it takes a lot of preparation. And you and I both know that we can do this for you. We can get your home sold. Do you yeah. think that we can get your home sold? And they'll say yes. And be like, we don't want to waste the time away from their family for prepping for this appointment when we already know what the result's going to yeah. be. And, if, and, and, if and I don't mind. I'll give them yeah. a call. This, yeah. And the stronger you are on the phone, mm -hmm. you know, it, in advance, and Patrick uh, Southern was the best example of that. They, when he was headed over there to meet with them, they already knew they were going to list with him. Mm -hmm. He was that good. He spent a few extra minutes when he knew he could. He oh, five in, more minutes on the phone will save you 30 minutes at their it house. Really, it really can. It, it can does. A big, 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 big difference. Well, my whole problem is I don't like driving, so I don't want to go if, I don't, if I'm not going to bring back paperwork. <laughs> no. No. And I'm really bad with directions, so I always get lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, when the self-driving cars come out, you'll be very happy. Yes. <laughs> but what, to the point is, like, you're better off spending the time on the phone, asking all the questions, finding out, have they thought about selling it for sale by owner? Have they thought about renting it? I mean, all of the questions, you're not putting the ideas into their head. No. You know, no, a lot of people not. think that. They think, oh, well, I'm going to give them an idea that they can sell it on their own. No, they already have thought about it or they haven't or whatever. You're just bringing all the objections up front. Yeah. Yeah. So right. you know what you're dealing with. And right. then usually they don't bring the objections back up when you get to the house. Yeah. Have you ever thought about selling yourself or renting it out? Or no, what? Like, yeah, oh, you're, renting you're, you're, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I make that noise like might that? As well, you might as well get it all. Hey, get things out. Might as well burn it down. Yeah. Oh. Commissions. <laughs> now, this is not a market where people haggle over commissions much, but they up in the Northeast, and I'm sure it exists in Chicago and some other markets. Sure. They're, especially in the Northeast, they're like 4.2 and 4.2. Oh, and they, they haggle over commissions. Any thoughts on commissions and when it comes up? It doesn't really come up. I would say, you know, I mean, it has before, but it doesn't come up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say, no, do you, you know, I appreciate you asking. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, it's real easy in this market with that. Um, this is a good one. If you're in one of those tougher markets, Pam, Pamela Jones up in Alexandria, Virginia. I mean, I mean, I was in the business for a decade and a half before I heard this one mm -hmm. and I latched onto it. It's the best one I've ever heard for commissions because the idea like, well, we'll discuss that when we meet. Well, you know, they, they realize you're dodging the answer. Right. And, and I don't, didn't want to dodge the answer. Uh, so yeah. when she came up with this one, it, it was really good. So it, ask, um, ask me. Okay, will you reduce your commission? Ask me how much I charge. Oh, how much do you charge? Oh, that depends on the condition of the home. Mm -hmm. And uh, the price we set on your home, mm -hmm. uh, Jen, and uh, and how competitive you want to be with the cooperating agents in the marketplace. Yeah. And we'll cover all of that when we get together on Thursday afternoon. There you go. Well, also, too, if you're dealing with a for sale by owner and they're asking you about commission, or really anybody, yeah. even an expired. Very common. You can, I mean, those, yeah. you think about why are they asking? Mm -hmm. And they're really asking because typically they want to net the most amount of money. Mm -hmm. So then I'll just say that a lot of people that ask about commission, what they really want to know, the real question is, right. is, you know, am I going to net the most amount right. of money or how can I net the most amount of money? And that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to right. show you how you can net more money even after paying the commission. Oh, yeah. So, so we can get you to Toledo. Let's talk about that because with FISBOs, you know, we save them money in inspections. We save them money in the negotiating. We save them money in the exposure. Oh. We save them, you know, 2,000 here, 2,000 here, 2,000 right. here. So it all adds up in a big collective from all the things we do. How do you explain when they went to a for sale by owner, how they're really coming out ahead? Well, it, de it depends on who the for sale by owner is, but really a for sale by owner is like a garage sale. Mm -hmm. So you have garage sale and you have Macy's mm -hmm. and they both have the same Michael Kors purse. It's yeah. exactly the same. It's brand new. They've never opened it. Mm -hmm. Somebody goes to a garage sale. What do they get? Are they going to haggle or are they going to pay the price? Right. They're always, always going to haggle. Yeah. They go to Macy's. They are never going to haggle. So the biggest benefit, I mean, yeah, the nickel and dime stuff, but they don't really see that. But what you can show them is marketing. So if you cast a wide net and you're catching fish, mm -hmm. are you more likely to catch more fish with a big wide net or a small net? 
Yeah, a lot more competitive. Yeah, it's a lot more competitive. We, you know, we have access to ninety eight percent of the property that's available. Or do you want to buy? You know, you only have access to two percent. And then they'll say, "Well, I can put it on the MLS <laughs> for mm -hmm. a flat fee." Mm -hmm. You know, you just it is about explaining how somebody pushing and marketing the home mm -hmm. and usually they can understand that. So a lot of times I'll find out what they do for a living mm -hmm. and equate it to what they do. Cause a lot of times Beautiful. they're attorneys oh, do. Yeah. or they're in sales already or like, it's always somebody like that. It's never like aunt Sally yeah. who's like, makes cookies. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. gotcha. mm -hmm. All right. So you find out what they do and try mm -hmm. to make an analogy that they can, that relate, they can to. relate to and understand now, with any luck. If they're in sales, sales are the easiest people to sell. Oh yeah. They are the best people to sell. There, there we go. Um, here's one from Mike Roth up in Milwaukee. Okay. He, um, he, he, he would say, if I show you a proven plan to expose your home to 99% of the buying public who are pre-qualified and ready to buy now, mm -hmm. would it be worth 10 to 15 minutes of your time to meet with me? There you go. That's, That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You can also do the, that reminds me of the route of there's four types of buyers yep. in the market. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So they're For serious sure. and in a hurry mm -hmm. there, or let me back up. You can say, were you aware that it's free for a buyer to use an agent? Yeah. And that, they're not really, they don't think about that because a lot of the for sale by owners are say, well, I'll pay you 3% if you bring a buyer. Mm -hmm. it, well, first so of all, automatically all, now they only want to save the other 3%. They will only want to save 3%. Hey, you reduced so, it down to 3% hey, that we're talking about here. Yeah, which is not, that's not that hard yeah. to, to pull. All right. So right, because, free, you know, just say, Mr. Seller, I, I know you already know this, when a for sale by owner sells, usually there's at least one real estate agent involved. So I appreciate right. that 3%. Yeah. So you know, you're just trying to save the other 3%. Other 3%. Right. Uh, so if I can show you how we can actually net you 14% more than you net yourself, would you rather save 3% or net 14% more? Yeah. And, 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 and if, if, if that was a good road as far as netting the most money, mm -hmm. for sale owners wouldn't be such a small fraction of the market. Right. They would go big, but they're right. not. Well. So good. Yeah. I'm glad we're talking. <laughs> That's exactly why we need to meet. Let's do some questions. How can I shadow her for the Vulcan 7? Come to Cincinnati. Challenge. Come to Cincinnati. Yeah, text, text me and I'll set it up. Uh, my text number is 513-409-1620. And we'll you can come in and shadow Jen. <laughs> It'll uh, be fun. So 513-409-1620. Then go over and shadow Sarah after that. There you, you saw, go. If you saw her from last week, uh, you'll get two very different two perspectives. For one. Um, uh, what is both your production levels for 2017? I haven't sold in a few years. <laughs> I coached a lot of top teams, but I would, for, for a decade and a half, I would do 150 to 180 sales a year. Um, yeah. And I always, you know, I always took about 10, 12, 14 listings a month. Yeah, we're right in 10 there. was a bad month. Yeah. But 12, 14, 12, 16. 14, that's good. It's very common. Yeah, just like last time. The other but person. she's actively selling. Yeah. So we're right in there, 160, 165. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, your sound is breaking up on me. Anything I can do to help it? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What I would, uh, what are you doing for sale? Owner says, no, I will not pay a commission. If, uh, if you bring me by, you'll be representing the buyer. So they will have to pay you. You know, I mean, you just have to keep working it and you know, you're not going to get all the for sale owners. What it boils down no. to what it boils down to is let's look at reality here. If they are for sale owner, if they have to move and if they have to move in a very short time period, reality will set in. They're not going to behave that way. So really the key thing you want to do is find out, do they have to move and do they have to move pretty quickly? If no, they're not, I have a, I have a, a, a thing that you should do. Here's the, here's the exercise. If they don't have to move and they don't have to move quickly. <laughs> Start away. <laughs> there you go. That's the answer. That better be your lead. And really it's only one out of six that you keep five out of six are in no hurry. They're just testing or they don't the have their, yeah, they, they're in no say. hurry. So, you want the one out of six. Yeah. So find out where they're moving to, how soon they need to be there, and what would happen if it didn't sell. You need to get a real clear picture of what they're trying to accomplish because only one out of six are key. Now, sometimes they, they do just still want to like test it and you find out that they, you know, they have to move whatever, but they still want to do it on their own for like a 
they'll tell you like a month or whatever, but it really is only like a week mm -hmm. because what they end up getting is a lot of calls, at least in our market, they mm -hmm. get a lot of calls of people that want special deals, like yeah. special financing deals, or they want to rent the property. Mm -hmm. So that's just really a follow up. And then sometimes we'll set a preview. Now, if you're going to go and preview a for sale by owner, mm -hmm. make sure that you door knock five doors on either side and 10 across. Don't just go there, that one house and then drive. Well, what home. do you say? What? When you knock on the, they, I know, you know what you say, but oh, they, they're probably mean? like, what would you do when you go to those houses? Do you what? sell them mint chip cookies or what? No, no, <laughs> no pies. Anyway. No pie. yeah. So what do you say when you go to well, a door? Well, we have a flyer thing, like a door hanger. What are you saying to them? I'm saying, hey, we were out, you know, looking at some of the houses in your neighborhood. Have you thought about selling? Great. Okay. That's it. So it's pretty for, simple. You know, when do you plan on moving? Right yeah. all the way, right down the alley. <laughs> mm -hmm. they're, they're perfect. Good. All righty. That works. Yeah. That that works. Uh, do you use Vulcan 7? Of course. Of course. <laughs> is it good? Yes, of course. What does this what say? Is this oh, come question? on. What does this say right here? It's the best. <laughs> uh, 160 is a solo. Or I used to hand one? dial. Oh my gosh, Vulcan 7 changed my life. Who would you recommend me to shadow in the, in the Virginia area? Call up Pam Jones in Alexandria, see what she's doing these what days. What about Mamo's uh, team? Uh, oh yeah, um, um, and oh, she what West is that Virginia? guy? That, uh, uh, Michael Putnam, uh, oh, he's, he's pretty intense. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, there are plenty up in Northern Virginia. It depends on where you are in Virginia. I don't know if you're in Roanoke. You know, Virginia is a big, or Norfolk, who knows, who knows. So, uh, but who do you suggest I shadow and text me, text me, 513-409-1620. I'll be happy to help you uh, get some shadowing in. What else do we need to cover on here? We've covered a lot of good ground today. I think I gave, uh, uh, did some of my favorites and you did some of your favorites, but really it's, the consistency, it's putting in the time. It you is. guys have watched these agents. Do you notice the mindset's the bigger piece? Do you notice the four hours a day is the bigger piece? Do you notice not taking a seller out and just getting all that worked out and where your only job is to list property is the bigger piece? And you can have amazing customer service. I know mm -hmm. you think you can't. You I can. know you think you can't delegate. Well, the bar is kind of low too for our colleagues. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you can do this. Oh, I thought of another one. Yes. We used to get a lot, well, where's your office? Cause we're in a really big market mm -hmm. and we, I mean, it's huge. And so they want like this local realtor that doesn't exist. So yeah. anyway, so we laugh and we say, oh, well, I'm a realtor, it's in my car. And we move on to the next question. Uh, uh, oh, that's a good one. I used to do <laughs> what I did and this was in Richmond, Virginia. I, I there was a road that kind of crossed through the whole town. Was, oh, uh, nice! Was, I think it was called Poe Parkway, and I'd say we're just uh, two or three blocks off the Poe Parkway, and then it, which could have been <laughs> anywhere in the whole city. That's and a then good I would, idea. And then I would ask him the, the next question, and I would say, I'd say, uh, so you're going to see a lot of us, and I would go on to the next question, uh, which is called a pattern interrupt when you ask the next question, because mm -hmm. it's a, you don't want them stuck on that one thought. No, so, you want to get their mind thinking about something else. Yes. Does that make oh. sense? So yes, that number one more time, Gavin Welch is 513-409-1620. Feel free, anything about the show, any questions, objection handlers, would love to, happy to answer uh, personal questions all week long about roadmap. If you're taking two, three, four listings a week, we'd love to have you on the show. Uh, we've got a great lineup coming in uh, through uh, December and January and February. So, but we'd love to add you to it. Purely a numbers game. New to prospecting, not great on the phones. How many dials, contacts do I need to make daily? Two lists, three harms per week. How many, uh, at least 30 a day. Uh, if you're not that great, you should at least try to do a bowl, a, a 100 contacts yeah. one, once per week. You will get a lot better. And, and pretty much, in, you know, unless you are where you need to be, I mean, what are you doing all day? Why not six hours a day? There's a guy, Froy Candelario, he was uh, selling 800 homes a year mm -hmm. um, yeah, in East Los Angeles, 800. And That's I, went, awesome. I went to lunch with him and I was picking his brain. And uh, I said, uh, he said, you weren't prospecting. He was, does six hours a day, six hours a day, intense. That's awesome. Um, and, and I said, you didn't always prospect six hours a day when you, when you started, did you? And I said, when you first started, your first month, your first six months, how many hours a day did you prospect? And he thought about it a while. He goes, 
13. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. That's awesome. If you know that, if you know this guy, it was, it was true. Mm -hmm. He pretty much did it every waking moment. I mean, what else you got going on? Nothing. Cause once you get way up here, you can, it's a lot easier. One of the things, um, uh, John Daler, I had him on a conference call many years ago. Uh, and John Daler, as, as somebody, a question came in and said, you know, he was doing 170 transactions. She goes, how many hours a week do you work? I don't know that I want to work that hard. And so John answered it this way. He said, when I was selling 45 homes a year, I was working 65 hours yeah. a week. When I got to 80 homes a year, I was working 50 to 60 hours a week. When I got to 100, 100, over 100 homes, 100, 110 homes. I was working 45 to 50 hours a week. When I got to 125 homes, I was working 40 to 45 hours a week. Now I've got about 160 to 180 homes and I'm working four days a week. And I it's take weird. three days off. Yeah. So there's a direct correlation. The more you sell, the easier this gets. And well, you create a lot income. of more efficiencies. Right. Mm -hmm. You're letting go of things and other people are doing it and you have systems. Right. When you don't have much business, there are no You're systems. reinventing the wheel every you're, time. You're wearing seven hats. That's it. Great. Oh, we've got uh, one more little thing here. We've got our two sponsors. One, I want to thank Aaron Wittenstein for letting us simulcast. Thanks, uh, Aaron. InspiredMasteryElite.com is his site where he helps people. It's his big give back. It's bad expired mastery elite where he gives back and helps people get to two three four nice. listings a week which is a wonderful thing uh if you want to get involved with lead gen forty one thousand people and it's all about it uh prospecting uh they're on facebook you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash got objections if you're watching on lead gen and there's a lot of people watching on lead gen and you want to get involved with Vulcan seven at a good price, go to Vulcan seven.com forward slash lead gen. And last but not least, if you spent four or five hours and you have done your job and you've talked to 30, 40, 45 people, maybe you set a couple appointments and got two or three leads, get out a big spoon and have some delicious graters, Mint chocolate chip. Yum. You can buy it anywhere in North America. Look, to, go to graders.com and look it up. And we will be back next week with another exciting adventure on how to take two, three, four listings a week. And another exciting guest who does take two, three, four listings a week. See you guys then. Bye. See you. Yep. So we will see you then. Well.